What's happening, my friends? We are in downtown Atlanta looking to have some chats with people about guns and gun control. So here we go. Uh, we're asking people today about what they think about guns. What do you think about guns? Um, I'm kind of anti-gun, but I'm also about to buy my first house on my own, and I'm kind of thinking about getting one. Con I don't know. Congratulations. Thanks. House is a big deal. What do you think about guns, man? Um, well, to be quite honest with you, I'm part of the United States Navy, so that's something that we deal with. I think that um, responsibility is key. Yeah. I think that there needs to be um, more background checks. There's a reason why the areas with the strictest gun control are usually the most dangerous and the areas you want to stay away from. There you go. Your shirt is awesome, by the way. Hey, what do you think about guns? Guns. I like streets. No, come on. I need a firm opinion here. I mean, I believe that everybody should have the right to carry. Yeah. If that's what they want. Very good. You know? All right. What do you think, man? I feel the same way. Yeah. If you're properly trained and you know how to use one and you know the safety procedures for it, it should be okay because like if you know how to use it, but if you have never gone through training or like anything like that, I don't think you should have it. And I, and there's like, I believe there's like certain weapons that like you don't need access to as like just like a civilian. Anybody got time for a quick question? Brother? Yes? What's the question? Oh, is this like so. the YouTube channel where like you, you're at the right and you make fun of on the left. No, it's not a gotcha oh. thing. Um, okay, so honestly, if you want to own a small firearm and you're going to conceal it and you have the right to carry and you go through training, then own a, own a firearm. But I think that you shouldn't be able to own like an AR-15 or anything like that, anything military grade, because I think that's just ridiculous. Yeah, we live in Mississippi, yeah, so, so I, I think that answers itself. Yeah, that means yeah, Yeah. John. Oh, sorry. So we're not doing the... the Still COVID. Ah, gotcha. Very good. Uh, so we were asking folks about what they thought about guns. Do you have an opinion? Can you weigh in at all? Uh, I believe in strict gun control. Uh, we're talking to folks about firearms today. Uh, you got any strong opinion one way or the other? I mean, I think firearms are okay, but I feel like they're being abused too much. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where, where did you get that opinion or what do you kind of base that off? Well, on? just off of things I've seen, things I've red, you know, things like that. We're asking people about guns today. Guns. What, what they think about them. Do you have a strong opinion one way or the other? I do, I do. I think they're important, um, but everything comes with a risk, you know? Yeah. It depends yeah. on who gets their hands on what. You know, we have people in religion and power that are doing God-awful, uh, dangerous things, and we have people in religion that are doing wonderful things that is healing the community. Sure. Same thing with guns. Yeah. You have people that are using guns to protect themselves and their family and using them guns to, you know, educate their children. You have people that are out here doing horrible things and being punks and really using their gun to exude power that they normally wouldn't have without it. And don't be a punk, guys. Don't Being be a punk, a punk guys. Because you might run across a real G up out here and get your toes stepped on. Exactly. <laughs> Do y'all know what the Second Amendment is about? Uh, uh, you can sorry, paraphrase. Bear, huh? bear arms. Yeah, it says the government shall not infringe the yes. people's right it to was, get access to it guns. Was written, it, was, it was written in an interesting <laughs> time of the of our cover our country versus what is currently no one's going to come take over your home in an ambush of, <laughs> of military arms. Like there may have been in like the yeah. 1700s. Got it. Do you, now, First Amendment also is the right to free speech, and that's yeah. also very old. Do you think that one still stands? Yes, but I also think there's some limit on that where you, I mean, your free speech shouldn't infringe, like shouldn't infringe or harm on somebody else and their, like. Yeah, we don't have the right to assault is, people. You don't get to yeah, beat someone up. You don't get up. to have hate speech or things that make that's also very other people. Area. Yeah. And how it affects everyone. Yeah, because yeah. now if I define hate speech, anything I don't like, you're not allowed to talk anymore. What do you think of that? I know, it's... <laughs> Such hard questions. It's, well, a, it's, it's a gray area. It depends but, on the situation. Uh, so one question that we've been asking to everyone is about the Second Amendment. Do you know what the Second Amendment is? Yeah, the right to bear arms. Right, and it says the right to bear arms shall not be infringed upon by the government. Right. Uh, and that so, was also made hundreds of years ago. Do about. you think the First Amendment <laughs> applies to, like, like free speech applies to like computers and stuff or is it just quill pens hmm good question i'm not really sure how to answer that because it was written a long time ago and as you said it changes right but, well, i mean i'm i'm not limiting your but use if you quill think pens. about I'm it doing computers free so. speech is free speech you have that right but it's also restricted 
in, in some places, some areas, yeah, there's some places where you can't really speak your mind, say what you feel. Where is it illegal to speak <clears throat> your mind and your ideas? Like, how would I say this? Maybe like, hmm. Uh, do you know what the uh, Second Amendment is and what the purpose of it was for? The purpose of the Second Amendment was a regulated militia. I think the Supreme Court misinterpreted it. Now, do you remember the wordage? Not exactly, but, yeah. uh, but, it's, but it's, 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 it's one sentence in two parts and you cannot read one in the absence of the other. He's right. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And the, the idea is... is if no, 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 no. You stopped before the end of it. Okay, very, you want to Google it real quick? No, I'm not going to Google it. Okay, but, well, but anyway. You stopped it. But, so the, uh, but he talked about the well-regulated militia in the very same sentence. And one of the founders, Monroe, would say, who is the militia but every man, woman, and child except for a few politicians, which is a very funny thing to say. Okay. So when you joined the Navy, you swore to defend the Constitution. Correct. Uh, the First, Second Amendment, all, all the other. What is the Second Amendment about? And uh, do you um, remember anything, kind of paraphrase what it says? Um, the right to carry a, a, a firearm basically gives you that right but still is a right within the laws that are already set and established you know when you think of laws such as um so is the constitution based on already established laws or is it the basis that everything else is built on okay well personally i think it was also based off of established laws but the founding fathers also put in place that those laws can also be changed you know based off of, um, the course of you know people coming together and having that conversation Right. So the Second Amendment says the uh, right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, meaning you can't make any laws of the government to limit people's access to them. Because then all of a sudden, what if, what if the government's the one controlling your access to firearms and they don't want you to have firearms and they can make it so impossible that you can't get them? And now a uh, tyrannical government possibly is the doorkeepers of whether you can have guns. The original kind of founding is the founders notice the general drift of countries toward tyranny, and if the government disarmed the people, they had no recourse okay. if the government went real bad. All right, look, we're going to get into a philosophical argument here, and I really don't have the time. The government's task with deciding who can have guns, yeah. but the Second Amendment's about not letting the government do that. You see the problem? What if the I government do. gets tyrannical? I think it's just a sticky situation. It is sticky, it's you know. It's very sticky. Um, my son is a veteran, did some really awesome stuff. Now, I will say, if I ever thought that he was outside of himself mentally, I would probably caution him not to have a gun or not want him to have a, you know, a gun like that. But now it's a family issue, not a government issue. True. Sure. Because you're good. <laughs> Let's let families do it, right? Well, what do you what do you think? It is a tough question. Uh, I think there needs to be some regulations uh, about it and control. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves like an old western. And with all this, trying to, I call it downplaying the uh, the police, defund them, and so on. Defund them ain't going to help any. Got it. They need to fund them in order for them to get better training, and that's one of the uh, yeah, biggest issues in, yeah. that we have. In. I'm a former police officer. Right. Uh, but again, you know, I feel that the everybody has the right to uh, bear arms. Right. You know, and but it needs to be controlled. Is it a greater problem that the government be the ones who uh, control all the firearms? What if the government goes tyrannical, like in Venezuela? Right. No, they I took got what away you're people's guns, right. and now the people can't do anything. What if our government went tyrannical? but they hold the keys to firearms. But why is it that that's always the first thing that people go to thinking that everything's just gonna turn upside down, but blah, 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 I you think know. Because it's a historical certainty that all free nations drift toward tyranny. It's, okay. the, it's the cycle of the world. Every ancient society was conquered either from without or within. So question, do you trust the federal government? Yes. You do? Yes. Let me ask you, do you trust the government? That's a loaded, that's a tough question. What do you think? Do you trust the federal government? Certain things, yes. Other things, no. Would you trust them to be the only one with guns? No. <laughs> no. So should they be the ones that regulate how easily or difficultly you can get them? Is difficultly a word? Difficultly? We'll go. Difficult, we'll go. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't no. know. It's hard. See, if the government can take away our guns and you don't trust the government to be the only ones having, you see the problem? 
Yeah. I don't think that any restrictions on it helps anything because in my opinion, it's not the people getting them legally that are the problem. Yeah. When you see things on the news and the headlines, it's not people that are going and getting concealed carry that are the headlines and unfortunately the catastrophic events you see. So I don't think that more restrictions are going to help the mental health problem. And there's a lot of propaganda that's covering that up. There's a lot of things that can just help. Yeah to help people, people helping people before we get into legality of it. No matter who the president is, I am gonna be a little wary of the federal government. I think that in general, like the government is always something to be wary of. Like, yes, they're protecting us and yes, they're trying their best, but you have to watch out and you have to protect yourself. Right. No matter what administration you're looking at. Right. No matter, yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Uh, What would you think if the government was the only people that were allowed to have guns? And then, what if they turned, like, tyrannical or fascist? That is a scary fact, but I'm hoping that under... I'm hoping, say this loosely, that our our democracy would be strong enough to prevent that. But I don't know. You never know. It's something to think on, though, right? It is. It very very well is. Do you trust the government to be the only ones with guns? You know, and that's the the Um, problem. What do you think? Well, okay, that is a good question. But also, I go back to my early statement stating about the Constitution. When the Founding Fathers came in and they created that, they also stated that, hey, these laws can be changed based off what's going on. At that time, you got to keep in mind, they was also making sure that other countries did not come in to, you know, threaten... um, the citizens at that time. Lots of talk about gun control. Okay. Do you think the government should have the power to keep you from having a gun if you wanted one? The only reason why I'm saying no is because the government, just by the way that they've been treating us since the beginning of their governing time, I just don't find that they to be trustworthy and they really to care about the people like that. It's more so about control, less about really uh, a sense of community and being governed. I really just think it's just control. It's really not being governed. You're really not really being governed. You're really being an undetected mind control slave, in my opinion. Dude rocks. I'm going to end it right there. (laughs) This guy's awesome. (laughs) Shaking hands. My favorite responses (laughs) of the day. Thank you. Cool, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, look for us, Warrior Poet Society. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and follow you on YouTube. Warrior Poet. We're on YouTube. Warrior Poet. He's doing it now. That's us. Okay. We're gaining a subscriber. We're following. We're following. We're subscribed. And we're turning the post notification off. He knows it. Every poll, all posts. I appreciate it. (laughs) Brother. Thank you. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Have a good one. Baby Bull Car just dropped my newest album. It's everywhere. Umatin Dirwaj. B A B Y B O K O R. Thank you, man. Love you. Love. Take it easy. That's a cool dude, like him. All right, folks, had a great time, had a bunch of good conversations, and the point of this video wasn't to necessarily win someone and beat them over the head with what I necessarily believe. It's really just have those good conversations with real people. Everybody we left, we left as friends, and it was a good thing. And I think the public discourse, it's real important, so you go and do the same. Drum up some conversations, and uh, yeah, we'll get a little better in the process, right? So train hard, train smart, and stay free. See you guys. So it appears we've lost the culture war. Big tech, the media, academia, Hollywood, and now the bulk of our federal government seems to be against free speech and their harassment of patriots because we have the audacity to still love freedom and the American Constitution. But you know, if you're like me, you won't go gently into that good night. We're fighting back. And we're doing it by controlling our own content and by bringing like-minded people on board. If I'm involved, we're gonna have fun. Shazam! Take action and become the man you are meant to be. We have an arc, the Warrior Poet Society Network. Help us grow stronger by joining the fight. Now's the time. Watch WPSN.com.